and welcome to the thorough newspaper analysis for 29th July 2022. So today we have one editorial, the narrative view, which has been taken from the Hindu. Following that, we will be covering the news update and the legal news, which you know are a part of Law Seco's initiative to keep its readers and students updated with the current affairs that is happening in and around of India to give them an edge in their competitive exams. So the, regarding the editorial for today, so the SC verdict is being criticized since the PMLA fails to protect the personal liberty from draconian provisions. Now, the SC has recently upheld all the controversial provisions of the Prevention of the Money Laundering Act, which shows how the same falls short of the judicial standards of reviewing legislative action. Firstly, the judgment shows that the commitment to stop money laundering is so invaluable that we are ready to compromise on the fundamental rights, on the implementation and protection of fundamental rights that has been set to a very high standard by the constitution. The intention of the legislature in this case is notable for sure. Yes, money laundering is a very big problem when we are talking of countries like India. And it is true that these money are fueled through trade of narcotics, uh, through terrorism, and this is slowly pumped into the domestic and global economy. In light of this, it is very important that PMLA is strictly enforced. However, experience suggests that money laundering in the Indian context is linked or is seen as a byproduct of a host of both grave and routine offenses that are appended to the act as a schedule. Now, this means that in normal conditions when we are talking of the intent of the legislature to you know like rest the money that is being transferred into narcotics or let's say terrorism funding so when we're talking of these the routine procedures or the grave procedures should be limited to let's say serious tax evasions acts of terrorism funding terrorism sheltering or narcotic trades or even like human cartelling However, the same in India is practiced in cases of petty fraud and trademark infringement. Now, it is pleading that the court did not recognize the testimonial compulsion and the lack of judicial oversight in this case. And it has also been held by the court that ED is not within the ambit of police. So any form of statements given to the ED can be produced to the court as evidence, which again forms a part of testimonial compulsion. And at a time when even the enforcement directorate is routinely targeting regime opponents, the verdict could be a grave step to the violation of the constitutional bar that is, you know, like very significant to India. India is known for the high constitutional bar that it sets. And this judgment definite or this verdict definitely downplays it to some extent. So with this, we move to the news updates for today. Firstly, we have the International Tiger Day. Now, Global Tiger Day is celebrated every year on July 29th, 29th as a way to raise awareness about this magnificent but endangered big cat. The day was founded in 2010 when the 13 tiger range countries came together to create TX2. The global goal to double the number of white tigers by the year 2022. Secondly, we have Navy gets its newest aircraft carrier, Vikrant. The first indigenous aircraft carrier has been delivered to the Indian Navy after a series of acceptance trials that validated its performance at sea. The warship will be formally commissioned next month and will initially operate with the MiG 29K fighter jets in a variety of helicopters. Thirdly, we have Manisha Rupeta becomes Pakistan's first Hindu woman DSP. Now, Pakistani woman Manisha Rupeta has made the headlines not only because she added her name to the list of a few female officers in authoritative positions in the Sindh police, but she's also the 26-year-old who became the first woman from the minority Hindu community in the country to become a deputy superintendent of police. Fourthly, we have the Birmingham Commonwealth Games 2022. Now, the Birmingham Commonwealth Games gets underway and during the course of the opening day, a large number of Indian players will be seen in action. Indian women's cricket team and women's hockey team are starting their campaign on day one and both will be wishing for a winning start.
Finally, the legal updates for today. Firstly, mother can give the surname of second husband to child after death of biological father holds the Supreme Court. Now, while upholding the right of the mother to change the surname of the child to that of the second husband. The Supreme Court, in the case of Akella Lalita versus Sri Konda Hanumanta Rao, set aside the Andhra Pradesh High Court order stating that the same should have been given after taking an account the mental pain and suffering of the child. Secondly, we have Section 436A of CRPC akin to statutory bail and can be invoked by accused arrested under PMLA. So the Supreme Court, in the case of Vijay Mandalal Chaudhary versus the Union of India, held that the beneficial provisions under 463A of CRPC could be invoked by the accused arrested under PMLA. The court also said that the section needs to be construed as a statutory bail provision. So this was all for today. For free study materials and TNA PDF slides, please join our Telegram channel, the link of which you can find in the description below, or you can always go forward and scan it given on your screen here at the red plot as prep. You can also follow us on our Instagram channels, Law Secret or Judiciary, Law Seco Clat Prep, and UGCNet underscore Law Seco. For any further information, please feel free to visit www.lawseco.com. Thank you.